Roaming is a Los Angeles-based premium lifestyle brand that is motivated by nature. Roaming features high-quality, earth-friendly dog products made from renewable and natural materials like their bio-based and 100% compostable biodegradable dog poop bags. These bags really are awesome. I've been using their bags for a few months now and I love the durability, the way they feel, and the fact that they are good for the earth. They also have a special discount for our listeners. Use code VermontDog to get 20% off your first purchase, including 20% off the first three orders if you sign up for one of their poop bag subscriptions. They also have some beautiful leather leashes made right here in the USA. You can check them out at roaming.com. That's R-O-M-N-G dot com. Time again for Talking Dogs with Ian Grant, owner of Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior, VFW Drive Hyde Park. It's the show that delves into the training, socializing, behavior, nutrition, and wellness of your dog. And brought to you by Guy's Farm and Yard with locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans. And we're back with the trainer, Ian Grant. And the topic this week, it's the first of a two-parter. It's like a miniseries. It's called The Front Door and Guests. And, of course, yes, if you do have a dog and you have guests coming in, that's always... A bit of a concern on uh, how everybody's going to react. Everybody's going to play nice during that time. So it's something you have to work at, though, sometimes. Yeah, and really when it comes down to it, priority number one is to teach your dog that you control the space around the inside of the front door. Ideally, most people are you know heading out the front door when they take their dog for a walk. So this is a great time to just establish some patience around the front door, some calmness. You know, be able to open up that door while your dog remains in a sit so the dog can be wide open. <laughs> this time of year, letting the cold air right into the house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and just being able to be patient there and then walking out together. So that's a great little exercise that you can just take an extra 10 seconds to, to create some, some calmness around the front door. Another time to do this is obviously when you don't need to. That's always a, a good time to practice. But you going to the front door, if your dog follows you and as soon as you reach for the doorknob, if your dog's nose is like in the crack of the door ready to find that little opening. They're too close. They are too close. We want to be in between our dog and the front door. And if you have to, take a couple of steps towards the dog to back them up away from the door. If you want to put them into a sit, if you want to put them into a stay to create some space, then by all means do it. Whatever respectful way you can do this, (laughs) go ahead. But the end goal should be that you can stand there, open the door, open it, close it, leave it open, and your dog doesn't bolt for the door, doesn't run for the door, anything. These are the types of exercises that we need to do. It it teaches the dog that, you know, front door open doesn't mean bolt. It doesn't mean excitement. This just means I need you to chill out because there might be somebody on the other side of the door. There might not be. But... Uh, we we want to get that space under control first. Of course, the doorbell is always the uh, yes. the, the signal. It's the uh, the green flag, and that's what they go for. So, one of the ways to um, train them. I mean, you wouldn't keep ringing the doorbell and tell them to stay, would you? I mean, or how? so actually, what you can do is and do this obviously when you don't have a guest is put your dog on leash, go outside, shut the door, and hit the doorbell button outside with your dog. Because now we're actually going to create a little confusion with our dog. Because normally they hear the doorbell from the inside. Ah, They don't hear it from the outside. Right. So we do it from the outside. And then once they realize there's nobody around, then we open up the door from the outside, hit the doorbell again. So we're desensitizing the dog to the doorbell. So Uh they don't realize that there's not somebody around. I don't need to bark this way. So you can do this in different ways. So you do that from the outside. You can do it from the inside. But... And same thing with knocking, right? Knocking is the same thing. People may come over and knock at the door. So we're we're working on desensitizing that. For me, I'm not worried about a dog being dead silent when they hear a doorbell or knocking because, hey, I may not hear it. The vacuum may be going or right. <laughs> something. And, they're, and they're, they're trying to tell you, hey, there's somebody at the door. Yeah, so I don't mind a couple of barks yeah, if, if there's a doorbell or a knock or whatever just to let me know. But then at that time, now it's time that we control the space right. around the front door because – we may be having to let a guest inside yeah. um, and go through that process. 
So really what it, what it comes down to is that space should be yours and there should be a lot of respect to that space, meaning the dog can't get into your space or try to bolt through the door. So it takes some practice, but it, it can be done. Yeah. And well, or when some, maybe you can have a friend or a neighbor come over and knock on the door or just walk in and, uh, and that's another way I guess you can train. Of course, you're right there to, uh, to, do the, uh, to do the teaching. Yeah. And if you need to keep your dog on leash to teach them through this process what you expect of them, then by all means, put the leash on the, on the dog inside the house and practice by the front door so you have something to grab a hold of. You can guide them if you need to. You know, If they get up to move towards the door, you can just grab the leash and direct them back to where you want them again. Uh, we have to be willing to repeat ourselves so the yeah. dog understands the consistency that goes yeah. along with it. Oh, there's that word again. Yeah. Consistency. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. And, and you got to keep working at it, too. Yeah, it won't be just a one-time session. No, it won't and be. You know, just be like a number of weeks ago uh, when we were, we were doing a show on uh, on tasks and such and – you get it down once. Okay, we're done. But uh, no, you're not. You got it. You got it once, and you might have missed it the first ninety nine times. So yeah, the repetitions of success, I think, is what we were talking about. Yeah, see, yeah. I, I do retain. I do. Reta- <laughs> do. I do retain some of the shows that we do talk about. <laughs> but in actuality, when uh, when there is somebody coming in in real life, would you have the dog on the leash to start? I mean, for sure, for sure. Yeah, especially okay. if it's just an excited, you yeah. know, super excited, happy go lucky dog and. Yeah, put the leash on it so you can teach the dog what you want in those times. Could you ever train them enough where you wouldn't need the leash? Or is yep, it, absolutely. Could. So you teach with the leash, and then once you achieve what you want, then you are then you do it with them dragging the leash around. And then once you've achieved that, then the leash comes off. Yeah. But the important thing is that you're reacting to it and taking control of your space. Exactly, right. yes. Back with our question from the doggy bag in just a moment here on Talking Dogs. Are you looking for gear that can keep up with your active and adventurous dog? Look no further than Synology Warehouse. They specialize in equipping the modern canine with distinguished, overbuilt gear that's built to last from home to horizon. From premium collars and leashes to rugged outdoor gear, they have everything you need to keep your dog comfortable and safe no matter where your adventures take you. I've been using their Biothane slip leashes for months now and I love them. They have a nice feel, a good grip, and they clean very easily. Use coupon code VERMONT to receive 10% off your purchase. Head over to Synology Warehouse on Etsy today and give your dog the gear they deserve. Synology Warehouse, overbuilt gear that's built to last from home to horizon. Back with Talking Dogs with Ian Grant from Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior, VFW Drive High Park. Find out more about his facilities, programs, and check in on some of his podcasts that he's done over the years. Go to Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior, that's all spelled out, dot com. Question this morning is, we have a new puppy and people want to pet her, but she gets excited and jumps on them. What can I do to teach her to stop jumping? Maybe you have to direct the uh, the guests, too. There the you go. Time. Look oh, at you go. Man, look at this. Let's just wrap it up right now. All right. That's it. <laughs> time okay. to go home. Okay. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is what it really comes down to. It. This isn't about teaching the dog. I mean, yeah, you want to teach your dog to sit, right. you know, in that situation. But this is advocating for your dog. This is this is kind of if and you have to step in between the person and your puppy, then you have to step in between. Right. But this is about communicating to the person that hey, hold on for a second. I'll yeah. let you pet the dog. Let me just do a couple things first here. Get the dog under control and then we can do it. I I had an old uh, a classmate of mine who got a dog and he created this like three-step process for any time somebody wanted to meet his dog. And he'd tell them, "Look, this is what I need you to do." And you'll be able to, you know, give him a treat and pet him and everything. But this is this is what I I need you to do. And so he he would do it, and he'd practice, and he'd go to different places in the stores around here that would allow dogs. And now you have this dog that just anytime it meets somebody, it just sits so politely and calmly, and did an amazing job with it because he re- he repeated it and created a pattern for the dog and more importantly for the people. Yeah. Now, especially if their guests are not dog owners, of course, then they they don't understand all of this. But yeah. uh, they uh, but they get to learn a little bit more about what the process is too because. They obviously don't want to be jumped on either, as the case may be, which happens if you don't act on this. Really what it boils down to is you're just prolonging the time until they get to pet. So instead of yeah. walking right up in one motion and reaching out the hand and starting to pet, you're just saying, hold on for a second. Give me about 15 seconds. Put the dog into a sit. Get its attention on you. And then show the person how to pet. That's really what it boils down to. It's just a little extra time. Yeah. You wonder how many pet owners do that, actually, you know, that they uh, <laughs> find other ways to uh, to rectify the situation. 
Yeah, you know, in my situation, like a couple weeks ago, I had a young six month old dog, just super happy, just a happy dog. Mm-hmm. A little out of control, happy. Yeah, that's the one that needs that extra time to just say, "Hey, hey, well, let's let's settle down a little bit," and then you can for sure pet if you want to. But yeah, let's just create some rules and boundaries yeah. first. But they look so cute when you see them too, especially the wrinkly ones. Yeah, the wrinkly, <laughs> the wrinkly ones too. Yes. If you have a question for Ian, you can email him directly to info at vermontdogboardingandbehavior.com. Well, next week we're not done with the front door and guests. It's part two. So what are we talking about for the second part of this? Now we're talking about the instructions to give to our guests uh-huh. and what we want from our guests when they enter and, and some ideas and concepts that go along with it. So this is – now we're dealing with the outside coming in. Oh, I see. Well, kind of like what we dealt with with the question this morning about – Uh, how uh, they should react with the puppies. That will continue next week. Yes. On Talking Dogs with Ian Grant, brought to you by Guys from and Yard, with locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans. And for the trainer, Ian Grant, I'm Roland LaJoy, and we are Talking Dogs.